Hey everybody, Aaron Fisher here with Conjurer Community, the world's best magic club. Welcome to Afternoon Astonishments. I'm here today with Alex Slemmer. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, Adam Grace, Steve Barcelona are off on assignment. So today we're going to be watching the final in our series of incredibly curated card conjuring from Harry Lorraine. Uh, and before we get started with these miracles, both miracles of magic and miracles of chutzpah and showmanship. Before we get started on this cavalcade of conjuring, please do us a quick favor and click that fantabulous follow button and that salacious subscribe button so you're notified every time we unearth one of these dank, nasty, beautiful old videotapes and share them with you. Hi, Alex. What are we going to do today? So today we're going to finish our look at Harry Lorraine and. Uh... It's great magic. I've been having so much fun watching Harry Lorraine. It's like a, a trip down memory lane for me. I'm sure the same for you. And it's uh, all good stuff. And it's great to see Harry perform. He's got that very strong personality. And it's uh, it definitely was an early influence on me, as I've mentioned before. And it's uh, just been a lot of fun. Really fun magic. All, all of us, because he was one of those rare guys that put so much personality into his magic book you really felt like you were getting what you wanted the most out of a magic book, which was a chance to be with the person who was teaching you. That's right? right. It's hard to get hang time with one of the greats. And here was one of the greats that would actually, you know, you felt like you were really hearing what he would say if you were there. And frankly, I think you were. He was a great writer. He's a great writer. So what was it, what, what, what's the first one we're going to do today? Well, this one's a really interesting trick. It starts as something and it becomes something else. And it's just a nice little twist and turn. And it's one of those tricks that like, I, I love these little gems of Harry's that like are sort of like palate cleansers, you know? And this one, this one definitely sort of fits that bill. Let's just take a look at it and we'll talk about it afterwards here. Thank you. Thanks very much. I want to try something again, a, a little different. I'm trying to do a diversified kind of things. Uh, Ursula, just touch a card. Don't take it out. Just touch it. Any card you want. That one right here. You haven't seen it yet, but uh, I'll tell you what. I want you to remember it. And now I want to stick it in about the center of the deck, okay? But don't forget your card. Don't forget it. Now, it's somewhere in the center, but I want to use four cards here. Just these four cards. Now, there's an interesting thing here. I have one, two, three, four cards. If I put one card away, and if I snap my fingers, I still have one, two, three, four four cards. If I put another one away and, and snap my fingers, I still have one, two, three, four cards. Isn't that interesting? If I put another one away, I still have one, two, three, four cards. This is getting silly. Let's put one more card away and just do this. Leaves us with only one card, which is interesting. What was the card you looked at before? The Ten of Hearts, that's interesting, but wait a minute, I like to take advantage of all the cards I have left, and those cards are a Royal Flush in Spades, which is kind of interesting. All right. Ah, bless it. You know, right, it's right. a great, it's, what's great about one of the things that makes it possible for Harry to do what he's doing is that he truly is a memory expert. You know how we've often talked about memory palaces don't seem like necessary to memorize the order of a deck of cards. We've said that before. Sure. But to remember all of the card tricks that Harry Lorraine has drilled out over the years and wrote down that he wanted to remember so that he could because, you know, he does a lot of magic. When he works, he works. He doesn't do a trick or two. You know, when you see him work, he's it's kind of Tamarizian in, in terms of what, what he does when he starts working. You know, yeah. and it's odd. You would never imagine those two guys would be thrown together that way. But stylistically, the way they get going with those cards, I would say there's a similarity to it. And I think to myself, how does he remember all this stuff? I mean, it's, you got to do magic a lot to remember it, you know? Yeah, totally. And he has a lot of little tricks like that, that have some intricate things going on, but he knows it so well that it all just looks like it's a, as effortless as could be. It looks like it's one of the ones he does, one of the top tricks he does all the time. And who knows, maybe it really is. I mean, that thing is just a, I think it's a little jam, you know, you go, you're going one direction. It's the too many cards thing. It's a wonderful little plot. And then all of a sudden it takes a turn and then there's the last one left. It's the selection. I don't know. Pretty much if you're ending with the Royal flesh, that's probably a pretty good trick. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule, but you know, what a great ending for a layman. They see that coming and that's just like a, 
that's like a left hook. Like what just happened? You know, I think it's, it's got a lot of great things going for it. And what, what a good piece of magic. I love it. Yeah. Simple setup, little control, bunch of Elmsley counts. And then before you know it, it's over. You know, it's heavenly, but you got to remember the setup if you're Harry Lorraine and which isn't a problem, except when you look at his books and you think, you know, that's a lot of stuff to remember in order to get all that stuff and have it ready. And there's a hell of an illusion he creates that he's locked and loaded all the time with that stuff. And you just, you know, I know he was doing a video set, right? Yeah. So he prepared for that. But even so, he creates an, a, an uncanny illusion that these tricks are always in his pocket. And when he writes in his books, this is one I do all the time. You think, man, he writes that an awful lot. But here you go. You know, you're not you're not going to call him out and catch him in a lie. You know, he's, he's mentioned a few times that when he sits down and does magic for people, that it's generally a couple three hour marathon. Like he sits down and does magic. You know, he's not sitting down and doing, like you said, a trick. He's he's got a couple decks sitting there and he's ready to go for a while. That's and right. He's, he's yeah. ready. to He's ready to work until it's time to till they kick him out of the, whatever space he's in. You know, exactly when, right. like when I when I was with him that first time, again, it was just the first day of a convention. He was just hanging out, but he had two decks out. He was sitting at a table. People were gathering and he was it was like he was doing hospitality magic. He was preparing. We came back two hours later. He was still going. You know what I mean? It's a it's an astonishing thing. And uh, in terms of me knowing what type, what book that thing is in bless you you know those are very big books and there's a lot of stuff in it John. i, I can't say i i haven't i haven't made a great study of the uh i don't even know whether this is late model or what we might call classic classic uh, lorraine or classic collection you know i don't know so let's watch another one yeah this next one is really great this uses something that's sort of an elusive uh piece of sleight of hand that harry does that I, i've never been able to master but he makes it look so effortless and it's well, just fun to watch one of his signature moves Incidentally, one of his signature that moves, last sure. trick was a minute and six seconds this next trick is a minute and 28 so just you know he gets a lot of magic done in a short period of time it's a blessing <laughs> uh, i want to separate the red aces in this deck i want I have to move back just a little bit I want to separate the red aces. Robin, look, can you see that this one ace will put it all near the face of the deck, about like that. Can you see that? And I want another red ace separated. Let's see if, we, if it's not there. I'll move it there. I'm doing, oh, here it is. So that's, that's near the rear of the deck. In other words, we've got one ace near the rear, one ace near the bottom. I want two cards selected, but I don't want them to be aces. So take out any card, Tanya, but if it's an ace, a red ace, tell me, because then I'll put it back and you'll take another one. It's not, oh, a, red, no. not a red ace. We, same thing for you. Take out any card, but if it's a red ace, tell me. We'll, it's not a red ace. Remember that card, and you remember your card. You can each show it to people. Don't let me see. It doesn't really matter. Okay? Now, would you put your card uh, back on top? And put... See, it's getting a little longer right now, but through no fault of Harry's. <laughs> it's true. This is what we call dead air in the industry. I love it. If I showed you that the other red ace came to the top also, isn't that a pretty good trick? If I told you that these two red aces are now going to change to your selected cards, that's even a better trick. But if the real miracle is that nothing really happened because the red aces are still one near the bottom and still one near the top, so nothing really happened. I don't know what you're talking about here. A, all right. We should watch that again. It seemed like there was a little hiccup that missed a little little bit of uh, meat in the middle there. I'm very curious because, you know, I, I can always... The thing is, man, if it's a quick effect like this, and you see how he keeps things moving, it's like formatted for a New York audience. He's not going to let you get bored. He'd rather you feel rushed than bored, at least in this moment, in this situation. And for, for my money, I, I don't know if we missed a little something or I missed a little something. Let's watch it again. It's another minute. Yeah, here we go. I want to find out what was going on. Uh, I want to separate the red aces in this deck. I want to have to move back That's just a little bit. I want to separate the red aces. Robin, <laughs> look, can you see that this one ace will put it all near the face of the deck, about like that. Can you see that? And I want another red ace separated. Let's see if we, if it's not there, I'll move it there. I'm doing, oh, here it is. So that's, that's near the rear of the deck. In other words, we've got one ace near the rear, one ace near the bottom. 
I want two cards selected, but I don't want them to be aces. So take out any card, Tanya, but if it's an ace, a red ace, tell me, because then I'll put it back and you'll take another one. It's not a red, no. not a red ace. We, same thing for you. Take out any card, but if it's a red ace, tell me. Well, it's not a red ace. Remember that card, and you remember your card. You can each show it to me. Don't let me see. It doesn't really matter. Okay? Now, would you put your card uh, back on top? Put your card back on top. If I were to say to you right now that if I cut this deck like this, that it would bring your cards back to the top right here. That wouldn't be much of a trick, would it? But if I showed you that a red ace jumped to the top, that's a pretty good trick, isn't it? If I showed you that the other red ace came to the top also, isn't that a pretty good trick? If I told you that these two red aces are now gonna change to your selected cards, that's even a better trick. But if the real miracle is that nothing really happened because the red aces are still one near the bottom and still one near the top, so nothing really happened. I don't know what you're talking about here. All right. Nothing really happened. <laughs> That's an amazing, again, this is where that was real sleight of mouth and a beautiful thing. And again, there are many tricks for many styles, but, uh, you know, if you love that trick, you know who you are. Yeah. I love, I love the way he's got a certain, you know, the bold, you know, remember David Hoy, the bold and subtle miracle, yeah. David Hoy. You know, Dr. Faust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love how like he's bold. Harry's bold, right? So he does yeah. those those two red aces. Then he does this like triple cut. As, as he he does a triple cut, a flourish triple cut, and goes and nothing really happened. This is here, and this is here, and you know, bless him. You know, he puts it right over, even when it's manifestly untrue that stuff happened. You know, I don't Those think changes were pretty great. I mean, that change, that's that that's the ultra move, right? I mean, it's one of those signature Lorraine moves. It's the ultra yeah. move is the part of it you're not supposed to notice even happened, right? Exactly. It's but, really good. But well, the ultra move is an interesting thing. I'm 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 prohibited from discussing it in our current format. It's but really just true. So you know, I was never able to learn it either during the era when I wanted to uh but he did you know he he made a quite quite a lot of hay out of it it's just interesting i think that particular trick is not about a very magical effect it's about a dexterous effect it's a bing bang boom and there it is so i don't think the audience is meant to think at the end i don't know perhaps that was skill not you know, that last thing was very mysterious and magical, but this thing might be fast hands. I don't think there's any concern there. You know what I mean? I think it's all part of a part of the flu. Yeah. No, I think he has moments because he even calls himself out on it. He said, you know, I, I show off sometimes, you know, and that's definitely that's a show off moment. But I, he's very skillful. I learned what I read in the Harry Lorraine book. One of the things that stuck with me in the very first place you know, there's a big debate in magic about how much skill undermines miracles. You know, if you start to do things where the audience starts to know that you've got fast fingers, at what point does that make them easy for them to dismiss the magic almost and not open themselves up to it in an imaginative way? But what, you know, Harry said in close-up card magic, which was very important to me growing up, was that, you know, the audience when they're watching you be a magician, it's nice if they think, you know, you're doing it at a professional grade. If, you know, if you can, you should be able to handle and hold the cards without falling all over yourself. You should be able to perhaps, you know, get your way through a cut or two without feeling totally like the ham hand count, right? Yes. And that always stuck with me. So I think every now and again, a little of that's all right. I think it's just understanding you know, the difference between a pinch of salt and too much salt. Perfect analogy. That's exactly the way I think about it. It's yep. just too much salt sometimes. That's, That's right. You got to keep it saltless. Another Harry Lorraine classic. Now, Another my Harry Lorraine classic. Good call. <laughs> do you believe in mind reading, if I asked you? That's the name of the next little ditty we're about to watch. Bless him for having a name that doesn't tip the ending. <laughs> right? It's not called... One to five amazement. <laughs> With the royal flush. <laughs> Red to green. While. Tell you what, in case you think we're in cahoots, you sh you're a good shuffler. So you shuffle, and I would like you to think of a number 
between one and ten. We've done something like this before, but this is a little different. Get a, a number in your mind. Don't tell me. You don't give me any hint. But get a number in your mind from one to ten. If you would reach over, I don't want to touch the deck. You reach over for the deck. Would you, Ursula, take the deck? Take the deck. And whatever number you're thinking of, now Robin just shuffled. So, you know, I have nothing to do with this, really. Uh, as a matter of fact, the two of you, I could leave, and the two of you would be doing this trick for each other. Whatever that number is, I want you to count down to that number in the deck, just to make sure you understand. If, if you were thinking of two, if I had another deck, I'd demonstrate. But you understand. If you were thinking of two, look at the second card, but leave it second in the deck. In other words, don't give me any clues. So whatever your number is, count down to that number, look at the card, and put the cards back so that your card remains at that position. Let at least one other person see your card, just in case you forget it, okay? So count down to that number, whatever number you're thinking of. Look at the card that lies at that position after Robin's shuffle. Leave it at that position and put the deck together. You let me know when I can turn around. Can I turn around now? We're all set? No? Okay. You understand what I want you to do? Okay. Is it done? I can turn around, square the deck. You know, don't give me any clues, in other words. Have you followed me this time, Ursula? In other words, if you were thinking two, you're remembering the second card. If you were thinking ten, you're thinking of the tenth card in the deck. Okay. All I know at this moment is, your, is that your card is somewhere near the top. But once I start cutting and shuffling the deck, I don't even know that. And to really prove that this, these cards are being, this deck is being shuffled, look, I've mentioned this to you a lot before. Look, I mean, that deck is being shuffled. There's no way I could possibly know where your card is. Cut, cut the deck again, if you like. Now, yeah, and complete the cut. Now, at this point, Ursula, it's very important. There's a little lecture comes with this trick, kind of. There's, you didn't, well, you showed your card to somebody, but there's no way I could possibly know it, right? There's no way I could possibly know your card. You're, it could be any card in the deck, and you are only concentrating on that card, and I haven't asked you a question yet, have I? And I don't intend to. I want to find your card without asking you a question. If I can do that, would you believe in mind reading, do you think? If I could find your card now without asking you a single question, what do you think? Probably. Probably. I'm glad I'm talking about it because there's no way I can't find your card. This is impossible. Are you concentrating on your card, are you? Well, I'll tell you. I think I've got your card. I'm so sure that I'm going to take just one more look. I mean, <laughs> uh, okay. I, I won't touch that deck again. Ursula, I really won't. I will not touch that deck again because I've already found your card. I've committed myself. I won't touch the deck again, and I haven't asked you a single question, have I? Okay. I told you before, there's a little lecture that comes along with this trick. There's only one way I can read that thought in your mind. That is the name of your card. I can't read your mind, really. That's a lot of baloney. But one thought, maybe, I can grasp. And in order to do that, I must make you think along two similar lines. And I'm making you do that without your realizing it. You're thinking of a card, you're thinking of a number. They're very similar. It's done by association. Let me repeat again that I will not touch that deck again. I have not asked you a question. I've already found your card. But to help you concentrate on your card, on those two things, tell me the number that you thought of, not the card. Tell me the number you thought of. What number were you thinking of? Nine. Nine. In other words, try to see your card in your mind nine times. Can you do that? It's not easy. <laughs> try to see your card in your mind nine times. Are you, are you doing that? Yes. Okay, give me any, you know, any magician could have your card and show you the card right away. Uh, I wanted to try a little thought transference also. Give me any number between what you said. Now, give me any number between 9 and 13. Say it out loud. What number? 10. You want the number 10? Oh, I said I wouldn't touch the deck. Take the deck in your own hands. Okay. Count down 10 cards. Is that the number you said, 10? Count down 10 cards. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Ten, yeah, put it down. Put the next card right here. Now, if I had a salt shaker, I'd put it on there. You know why? <laughs> because if that's not your card, I'm going to have to eat it. I like to put a little salt <laughs> on it. <you> know? <laughs> because, because, really, this is impossible. There's no way this is right. But I did put a certain card at that position before I asked you a question. So for, for the first time, because nobody else in the world out of this room knows your card. Certainly I don't. So you could lie if you like and make me look like a fool, but there's no reason for you to do that. So for the first time, what is the name of the card you're thinking of? The three of hearts. The three of hearts. <laughs> Would you take a look at that card? Did we get anywhere? Oh, <laughs>
I feel like that one just had like a little bit of it all. <laughs> it was like every bit of the Harry Lorraine, per, Harry Lorraine personality was just sprinkled throughout that whole piece. I love it so much, man. Just a little chicken fat over the top, a little schmaltz to make sure it was tasty. Like, I love it. You know, I love how he makes the outrageous claim. Then he says the claim is baloney. Then he makes it again. You know, he says, I'm going to read your mind. I'm not going to read your mind. That's baloney, but a thought. Perhaps I can read a thought from your mind. I'm going to go through the deck. I'm not going to go through the deck. I'm going to go through the deck one more time, but I'm not going to go through the deck. I'm not going to ask you a question any more than the questions from before. Did I ask you any more? Don't, I won't ask. I, and he's literally saying it all. And it's a, this powerful, powerful barrage of information. You literally can't. And I personally think he does that as we all do as a, as a magician. He's always looking at how much is under the hood, how much horsepower is coming through this trick. And he, he's not afraid to lead with his chest. This effect in and of itself, you can debate about how powerful the effect and the method are. Agreed. Agreed. Right. But Harry Lorraine is going to not be afraid to put in what the method and the effect left out. It's sort of the reason I included it here, because there was so much of Harry's personality is in this thing all over the whole thing. And it's a lesson in how that guy is able to take something that could be considered maybe mundane, but make it into like an effect that people cheer for. And I, I think it's just a wonderful study. You know, I, I love it. I will never forget those hands of his. And, you know, I, I mentioned this before, but this is a day that really stuck out to me. It was my first time ever. I was at this place called the uh, Effector's Finger Flinging Frolic. And I'd never been to this. It was an invitation only convention. It was like 100 people there. I was very excited. I was 18. I had never seen Harry Lorraine in person in my life. And it was like a, it was like seeing a person in a bust, but in real life. And so I was fascinated by those long fingernails of his, you know, and I was just, I couldn't take my eye. And he had, eh, it's a little dandruff. He's hanging out with the guys, but I was fascinated by this guy. And I swear he was in the middle of one of these tricks. And he started to tell me, he goes, look, I don't know if I can do this. My mind isn't what it used to be. And he's doing the same thing he's doing there. But I'll be danged if watching him, I was feeling empathy and I felt like, ah, I don't know, man, maybe we put him on the spot and this it's an older fellow. Maybe he's not going to be able to. And of course, you know, he was just laying it on <laughs> totally with me. And I can't figure out. John Gosman says he uses constant use of the glasses. Very interesting. It seems to have absolutely nothing to do with seeing. It seems that when he puts the glasses on, we are to believe he is about to use his magical powers. He is, I've never seen anyone who creates such a magical effect from openly spreading through the cards, which you're not supposed to do before revealing a card that you secretly pick. So, you know, you take a card out, it's a secret. You put the card back in, it's a secret. Maybe you didn't touch anything. Maybe it's over there. You thought of a number, but he's not supposed to see the card or know what it is. He puts on those glasses and you feel as though someone has entered the operating room. The doctor has entered the operating room. And then he somehow does this a fair amount. And he puts them down and he says, now I haven't done anything at all. And you think, well, he hasn't done anything at all. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, it's a weird thing. It's plain to see. And it's totally like uh, it's hypnotic. You know what I mean? It's These aren't little, the droids you're looking for. Totally. I'm not going to look again. I'm not going to touch the deck. I'm not even going to touch the deck again. I, he said, I'm not going to touch the deck again five times after touching the deck quite a lot you know at a certain point it doesn't add up mathematically but you feel it you're in the presence of the magician and i really think it uh, it sounds like we're being silly but what i'm saying is you have an example of such a great magician that by the time he tells you he hasn't touched the deck five times 
you've been watching them touch the deck enough times for all of that and then some, but he really convinces you that 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 promise he's making is is significant. He's not going to touch the deck again, you know, and starts to get more amazing from there. No matter how how long he held the cards, you know, no matter what he did, it's a. It might be. It, it would probably be interesting if we could speak to the layman that were there at that shoot and see what their impression of Harry Lorraine is, because I bet they walk away just thinking he's just like a wizard. I, I have no idea what happened there. That guy's just he, amazing. He's, he's a, a memory wizard. expert. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a wizard and. Being a memory expert and using those glasses and the, you know, you were doing a teach last night at the magic at, you know, we were having our secret night, right? In the yeah. club. And you were talking about a mind reading piece. And you were talking about how important it is that our teacher friend, Max Maven, talks about the fact that if you're going to be a mind reader, you have to have a process. Right. Just like a superhero who can read minds or Spider-Man has a spidey sense. You know, there's a process. You see something, something happens. You don't just tell people the answers, the thoughts you can't know. Carrie Lorraine, and maybe it has to do with being a memory expert, really does, because that's really very much like mind reading in terms of the nature of what it looks like. It's a person using their brain to seize information, which is so hard to grasp. The ordinary minds can't do it. In memory, it's like you're grabbing it from the depths of your memory, but that's not too different in how it reads from grabbing it from the depths of someone else's memory. Right. And I just feel like when Harry Lorraine looks through those cards, which you're not supposed to do, in theory, before you reveal a card, you're not supposed to see, you believe that he is doing wizard stuff with his brain. It feels very significant, doesn't it? It does. And also John's point of the glasses, you know, using them sort of as a magic wand. It's like he's turning on his secret power, or turning it off where he's like just normal magician. And then he's super wizard when he puts them on. Like, that's a very good observation. I think that there, he's, you know, he's otherworldly in his own way. Right. It's really something. It's, it's really well something. thought out and it's beautiful. And it's so well thought out and beautiful that it appears to be completely unaffected and natural but he has been developing he had developed his persona for 50 years before any of us ever met him you know so that's right it, of course it is natural and offhand and beautiful but man it sure does look like you know it, it could it just looks like it doesn't it doesn't see it's very subtle and it's it, you know what I don't know if subtle is the word everyone would use, but there's a lot of beautiful subtlety to it. You know what I mean? It's an astonishing thing. Is well, there there's, one... enough, there's enough little subtle things added up that makes him, he's just a one of a kind, right? There's not another one like him. You can't say, oh, he's sort of a, like a Harry Lorraine type. No, there's really only one Harry Lorraine. And that's, that's, it's that's, it, that's an achievement. <laughs> That's an it, achievement it, as a performer. It's true. And one of the things that we can all learn from them, something that they used to say when I was studying stand-up comedy, you know, if the audience isn't reacting, what do you do? You know, anything else. And I think he is sensing his audience at all times and he doesn't stop selling. Okay. So when they're buying it, he may ease off a little. If he doesn't think they're buying it, he sells it harder. It's hard to see a fellow invest more belief in his performance and what he is doing. You know, there's a, a real powerful lesson here. What's our last miracle? We got one more we're going to watch today, right? Yeah, this is a classic of magic. I don't want to say what the title is because unfortunately it might spoil the surprise, but we should watch it. And it has, in addition to its title surprise, there's an additional surprise above and beyond that. So it's it's just a wonderful way to end all of the Harry Lorraine uh, deep dive we've been doing here. So let's take a look. Thanks. I did something like this before, but I wanted to try something a little different. If you would help me uh, again, Robin, you, you can, you're not colorblind. I tested you before. For example, you know what color that is, right? What color is that? Right. And you know what color this is? And you know what color this is? So you're not colorblind. Okay. That's important. Now, what I want you to do now is to touch any card. Just touch any card you like. Which one? The four of diamonds? Okay. If I were to do this, you've touched the four of diamonds. If I were to mix up these cards like this, 
Incidentally, do you, you remember the color of the backs of these cards, don't you? Well, red, right, you're absolutely right. If I were to do this, you know what happens? Those red cards all change to blue. Look at that. I mean, they really do all change to blue. If I did it one more time, if I do that one more time, you know what would happen this time? What happens now is one card should change back. Yep, one card should change, change back to red. Look, there it is, that red card. Would it be a good trick if this one red card in this entire deck was the card you touched before, which I've forgotten? Which, which was the card you touched? Four of diamonds. Four of diamonds. Well, I'll be done. Look at that. That is, you touched the one red card. But, you know, I know what you're thinking. I really do. You're thinking, wait a minute. What if I would have selected any other card? For example, let me just cut to any card. What if I would have selected the eight of hearts? Well, you know what I would have done? I would have touched that four of diamonds like that and made a change to the eight of hearts, you see? That's how you do that kind of magic, right. Thank you. Now, uh, I do wanna, I do, well, you know, after a while what happens is, what I wanna do is just make those disappear so there's no way I could do any more tricks for you. All right? Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bring that back a smooth 30 seconds, would you? <laughs> you know, misdirection doesn't always, great misdirection live for the people doesn't always play well on screen because you have to shoot it for the screen. So let's see what's happening here. I do want to, I do. Well, you know, after a while, what happens is what I want to do is just make those disappear so there's no way I could do any more tricks for you. All right? Thank you. That's a good example of something that really played beautifully live. Exactly. exactly. You know, you're applauding, you, you look back, and you would literally swear that you saw those cards vanish in his hands in real time. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it was standing ovation. You know, it was like a perfect exclamation point to all of the magic they had just seen. The cards just vanished, leading more to the conclusion of that old man was a wizard. You know, it's very interesting when you're using misdirection, attention management, as we more properly say with an audience. You know, it's all about showing them the story at each moment and moving them from moment to moment. And we've often said that your greatest danger uh, when you're using real attention management is your greatest danger is a person who is just sort of out of it, who's not really paying attention. In that moment, anyone who's engaged by the show is up, they're applauding, they're cheering, their eyes are still on Harry Lorraine. Uh, they're in a perfect spot for him to take that deck and just make it disappear. But the camera in that moment is a dead, dispassionate thing. It was right where it was and it didn't move. and just like a dumpski lying there out of it, not paying attention to what's going on around them. That's exactly the same kind of position that a spectator will have if, if they are not in the web. Now, everybody in that room is caught up in Harry Lorraine's web. So everybody in the room is, is taken in and mystified. The only reason the camera isn't mystified is because it's not a person. Right, it's a machine. It just stays there dumb while the camera operator's doing this. You know what I mean? It's uh, pretty astonishing. Uh, and again, I, I feel like that whole last trick was just a good setup for him to do his vanishing deck there at the end. Agreed. I think that that's exactly what the point of that was because I think as a color changing deck, it was, it was all right. You know, it was a Chicago opener. It's all right. It was like those two things together. It's, you know, it's pretty neat. But it's really about that vanish, right? He vanishes those cards at the end. And what a great exclamation point and a great for, way for us to end our look at Harry Lorraine, right? It's just one more bang. There it is, a beautiful miracle. And solidifying the reputation of just how great Harry is. What a, what a great time this has been looking at all of his magic, man. I, I love it. I love it. And, and you know what? We love that you did, Alex. We don't know how you, we do know, but we're not going to say how you curated your personal vaults of all these wonderful clips of all these truly iconic, classic, legendary magicians. But it's such a treat that you do it. And on behalf of myself, the Conjurer Community CC Club, which is happily the fastest growing and most joyous magic club in the entire universe, any place online or off, it's just thrilling and it's a beautiful thing that we get to do it and celebrate this thing that we love so much. So we're going to be back with more juicy stuff, everybody. Uh, but for today, thank you for joining the, us. If you've never been a part of a real magic club before, 
be sure to check out CC Club uh, and be aware, members, uh, no after show today uh, formally. We've got a lot uh, that we've got to get to with our promises for our, our big announcements on next uh, Wednesday night. Thanks for coming. For the rest of you, make sure to hit the fantabulous follow button. Make sure to hit the salacious subscribe button so that you can be notified when the hammer comes down and the secrets uh, are let out of the bag because that's what it's all about. We want you to be there for it. We want you to join us at CC Club. We have a lot of fun and we'd love to see you there.